Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. And I'm so glad you joined us today for our call because it is such an important topic when it comes to health. Um, it's sure to be a very enlightening discussion about how the experiences of your ancestors got coded up in your genes, in your DNA, as memories and patterns of responses to the environment, to your ancestors' world that ensured their survival, for better or worse, right? Especially the more traumatic experiences that got encoded and how those might still be rolling around in your um, genetic makeup and, uh, and, and affecting you today in terms of your own health and well-being. So um, for those folks that, especially for those folks that have experienced some unknown source of physical or emotional pain, um, we see this also in cycles of abuse and addiction and loss that get passed on and repeated within a family. All of these things will be addressed and Dr. Aubrey um, Wallace will share with us her perspective through what she calls her windows of health and the way she um, goes in and does her readings is she's looking at eight specific areas of influence on your health. Those are infection, environmental factors, allergies, structural genetic factors, belief systems, stress, and um, ancestral influences and other factors. So again, today we're going to be looking at um, the ancestral connection to your health and well-being. And with that said, Dr. Wallace, take it away. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, hello, everyone. Look at all the beautiful faces today. Thank you for coming. Um, ancestral healing and ancestral factors. This uh, this topic, I can already feel uh, the energy of the ancestors coming in. Um, and energy and ancestors have a very particular, beautifully um, grounding energy. I'll use that word. <laughs> Uh, but often then the, there's a complex uh, energy that comes in when we're dealing with ancestry that is um, rich, human, uh, rooted, earthy, beautiful, hard, uh, chaotic, <laughs> all the things. So um, what I want to talk about with ancestors in terms of the window of health uh, is on the window the four inner windows, as we've talked about before, are kind of the window panes. Those are the factors that uh, we can do kind of do a lot about, right? So if you have an infection, we can figure it out and take care of it. Uh, if you have, you know, nutritional issues, we can adjust and address those. We can deal with allergies, that sort of thing. The window, the window frame is a lot more ingrained, deeper factors that impact. And last week we talked about the belief structures that go in or the stories that we've woven our lives around um, that sometimes need to be retold and re um, changed, right? To bring us a different way of bringing health into our life. With, an with ancestral patterns, um, it's almost like the stories of our ancestors, right? All the way back. Uh, on all of the sides of influence that you have, which um, if you think about it, uh, if you think about the ancestors as the roots of your tree, um, they are vast and connected across many, many generations of, of different beings. Um, so today, I think the best way for me to work you through that, what I found is ancestral patterns are always a direct experience. Um, it's something you have to experience directly because it's your family and your ancestry would be like me trying to say, this is how it is when you work with families. <laughs> so um, all of the things that happen with families happen with ancestry. Uh, what I find in um, working with people when this comes up on the window of health, oftentimes the ancestors come up sometimes for miasms or or patterns of trauma that have been passed down but often it actually comes in as uh aspects of resilience that the that the person is uh, functioning off of in their own life so they'll come through with you know 
uh, no matter what, we don't give up, you know, like their soldier energy is coming through to carry them through uh, some sort of a pattern of crisis they're in, or a strength often comes through, um, never letting go, that sort of thing, never abandoning. So the, the patterns of, that have been passed down are actually about the resilience that the ancestors are offering for the person. And sometimes those can really benefit and get them through and help them survive. And also they can be the wrong strategy occasionally for that person to get through that level of the illness. Or at least they might want to go beyond that strategy uh, to use their own tools and their own um, superpowers to take care of whatever's going on with their health. Um, my training in ancestral healing and uh, it was with Dr. Klinghart and I did a family constellation training and I felt that I might just tell that story quickly because I think that's the most um, <laughs> informative about what, uh, some of the aspects that happen with ancestry. So um, obviously I'm doing medical intuitive readings. Everyone here can, knows I'm a little weird. Uh, but when I, so when I took that training, um, I didn't really know anything about it. And we came into the room for the training and he had everyone in a circle. We were all sitting, sitting in a big circle in chairs. And the woman who was going to be the main focus for the reading, she was the one we were going to do ancestral healing on, came in and sat in her chair. And her job was to kind of explain what medical illness she had and how we could address it through the ancestry. So while she was sitting there explaining what kind of uh, health issues she had going on, I saw a dead man or a ghost of a man, you know, a, a, a person who had passed walk in the room and he walked up behind her and he put his hands on her back. He put two hands on the middle of the back of her heart. And I thought that was very strange, <laughs> but I just continued to watch. And and then when Dr. Klinghart started to do the work, he showed uh, he showed us that the, the con family constellations are done by having different people in the audience play different roles of family members. And the first person that she went, she went to grab someone and say, could you play this role for me? And the way that he moved people into position for the role was to bring both hands to their back and move them to the position. So I had already seen her dead father come and put that on her back before she started doing that to others. And as he, as she put each person into position in the circle, I saw the dead relative come in and stand behind them and stand with them. Um, and then the work was really an orchestration of each person feeling and experiencing that ancestor's uh, loss and, and experience. And it played out in the scenario I saw was, a, was something from World War II that had a lot of travesty and loss and um, just horrific things that had happened during that war. And, and the dynamic I watched as all of these dead people had a chance to play out through the characters in the room um, what was going on for them at the time. I also saw, <laughs> I don't know, many, many other dead uh, people come in the room and fill up and just pour love into the circle. So I did not do very well with not just sobbing through that entire experience. <laughs> Um, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Uh, so my experience and my perspective on ancestral healing um, is deep. Um, the ancestors can be accessed and utilized to completely clear out these deep patterns. And this beautiful woman whose health had been challenged by this issue, um, she really had a lot of clearing by the next day, actually. And um, you could tell that this was a deep and lasting healing for her entire family. So ancestral healing to me is, it is one of those things that can cause some confusing and um, deep, hard symptoms to shift. Uh, and that's, I think, in, in the exact uh, level that it can alter uh, deep healing for generations of family members um, when it's done properly. So um, I think the best way for me to help you guys check in on ancestry would be to do a brief meditation. Uh, if people are willing. And what I do is invite you uh, just for a second, if you'd like, take a minute. If you're driving or whatever, don't close your eyes. Um, but I want you to see if you can bring yourself into imagining yourself as a tree for a moment. And I want you to notice what kind of tree you would be or you are. 
And then I want you to bring your attention to your roots. And for some people, your roots are in the sky. So if you're having a hard time finding your roots, you might look up. And for a moment, I want you to expand into your roots and just feel them. Feel yourself anchored wherever you are in the ground or the sky. And then I want you to imagine or invite your ancestors to come in as trees, as forests around you. So often we'll see our mother's side of the forest on the left and our father's side on the right. And that can be your bio parents, that can be your step parents, <laughs> that can be um, anyone that you have as a family relative created a bond with, you have access to their forest. It also counts, and you want to add in the your mates, if you have connected or bonded to a mate and or had a child with a mate, you might notice and see if their forest of ancestors is connected with your roots. I want you to pay attention if there was a toxic relationship in your roots. Are you connected to that side of the forest or is that a one way, you know, just I see you guys over there? Just pay attention. How are your connections? Are they good? Are they missing? And then I just want you to think about one thing that's been bothering you in your life lately. Just one, maybe one issue that kind of recurs for you that has come up. And then I just want you to offer it to the trees for a moment. Just look out across all of your trees and ask if there are any ancestors that would like to give you any sort of support or information about that issue for you. And if one lights up, you can decide, uh, but you might want to try receiving that information and sometimes we'll receive it through our roots, but often it's right through the center of our hearts or our knowing. It helps to show respect for your ancestors, to remember what you respect about them, about that side of your family. And anyone in that family you respect, that will help. So be respectful. And be loving. But mostly, when you receive the gift from them, see how if you can receive the love from them as well. You, you are their future generation. They are invested in your well-being. No matter how that has looked. And when you're done, I want you to thank your ancestors. If you are here for a reading today, you can also just invite any that may want to step forward with you to be invited. Keep in mind what you found that you respect. That's going to be a very important part. And then let's play. Mm. Beautiful meditation. Thank you so much, Aubrey. That was amazing. And um, yeah, I got some information. Yay. <laughs> and that, that was beautiful. You should. They are your ancestors. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and just a side note, it is true. Dr. Wallace can see dead people. That was my first experience with you in your office. <laughs> And you saw somebody standing to my left right up behind me and a dear friend of mine. So that is 
that that is just such an amazing talent and ability of yours and um, family constellation is so powerful that work and i'm really excited to to hear more about that from you <laughs> but right now we'd like to start in on the uh, medical intuitive readings and before we do that laura you had a question that you wanted to ask Wonderful. so go ahead and take yourself off mic you just um, unmic yourself or unmute yourself by tapping on the mic. Yeah, there okay. you go. Okay. Okay. I actually just wanted a reading. Oh, oh okay. All. Perfect. Okay. Well, okay. you are definitely in line yeah. to, to do that. And okay. um, I'm going to maybe do something a little, uh, this is not what we no normally do, but I know that Brian has something that he has to be at at, at 1.30. Brian, do you want to do a reading? real quick and then we'll make sure everybody else that is in the room right now you will get a reading so not to worry yeah yeah that would okay. be great okay Brian. hi brian hi it's nice to meet you nice to meet you um did you have a particular thing you wanted me to scan in on um i'm just going through a big transition right now so right. um whatever is helpful wonderful all right, let's see if we can t dive in on your big transition. Sometimes it takes me a little bit to get out of my ancestral frequency here. Just a second. <laughs> okay, there you are. All right. Well, um, what your guides are showing me right off the bat is that you um, have a brilliantly intensely, I don't know if intense is quite the right word. Um, it feels like um, force, you are a force <laughs> in the world. Um, it, and you feel like you have a beautiful, clear intention energy that run, you're running in your life. Um, I honestly, what I'm hearing from them is sky's the limit. <laughs> you, got, you got what you want. Um, you, you're you not easily stopped would be my guess because I feel like you're not fighting, right? You're actually just putting the positive energy through from you out and you're going. And I, my sense I'm supposed to tell you people may not understand. <laughs> um, that's okay. And uh, it feels like you can be unstoppable. <laughs> um, mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yes, wonderful. it's very pertinent. All right, let's see if there's anything else they would like me to share. Um, there is this sense they're showing me, I'm supposed to just reassure you, you are not alone. <laughs> um, and it feels like as you go forward, it's it's like how do I how do I explain that visual? It's almost like in your wake, right? Like you're putting waves out, but in your wake, uh, there's like this spiraling off of all of these beautiful people, and they're coming up, and it's like because of the because of the ripple you've put through the water, all the people are surfacing up behind you, and they're coming up, and and they look so happy. <laughs> there's mm. a lot of very happy and um, bubbling happy people, and. Every once in a while, they will reach up and kind of, it looks almost like they start riding their speedboats next to you, right? Like <laughs> they're, I, I'm kind of, please forgive me, I'm a bit of a dork, but it, it reminds me of the scene from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> when, when he's jumping out towards, you know, and he looks to the right and he looks to the left and all the Kung Fu masters he's ever loved are there, right there with him jumping forward. He's just like, I love my life. You know, that is the feeling I have for you. Like, so you're starting the wave and they're coming. They're coming to be with you mm -hmm. on the ride. Um, all right. Is there any particular question around that subject you would like answered? It sounds like we're maybe on the right channel. Yeah. I mean, I think that is plenty and super um, pertinent. So I just want to say thank you so much. Ah, oh, it's very nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing how you're changing the world there. Looks like it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Aubrey, you nailed that. Okay. <laughs> so good. How oh, awesome. Thank you, Brian, for joining us today. And so next up is Lindsay. Lindsay, oh, 
can take your mic off. Hello. Hi, how are you today? Good. I just want to say that I love your personality. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, that, that's nice to hear. It, it, I don't it is think a little much weird. for some people. Yes. <laughs> um, so originally, well, I didn't know exactly what we could ask and yeah, anything you what want. I've, I've, what I've been <laughs> struggling with, I think, is some nuance of depression. I've suffered with depression in the past, okay. but it really seems like a disconnect between my mind and my body. Like where you. I'm at with this right now is I'm not feeling emotions in my body. Okay. And that, I mean, is a range from, it, it started out just more positive emotions. Like I couldn't generate positive emotions. Like I try to do in meditations. Um, and now it's even gotten to the point where things that would normally cause, I have this kind of strange reaction if I see somebody in pain or if I feel scared, I will get yeah. this like pain in my groin. Now that's okay. gone. So like even the fear side um, of having, I guess what you'd say a somatic experience of my emotions are gone. And while that's alarming in itself to me, another component of this is I believe in using my emotions to manifest positive things in my life. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to um, manifest more clients and a lot has changed in my business. Um, I'm very sensitive. And so I, I just don't know all the layers to this and I'm looking for clarity. Um, and when we did the meditation, that word disconnection came up again and a sense of how I think for a long time I felt a bit disconnected from my family. Now all of my family is loving. Yeah. But I'm so weird as a intuitive <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! Yes. <laughs> and they're very religious. And so yeah, like I said, there's there's layers and um I'm just looking for whatever clarity you can read or they can bring forward. I'm um, all right, because so we're getting all sorts of fun here. Um, all right, hold on to your pants, okay? So what I got here is that we have a uh, first, it is a sh first chakra imbalance that uh, we need to talk. Are you familiar with the chakras? I am. Um, any, good. Anything I say, ask if it doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, so it is a root chakra issue or a root chakra focus, meaning that it is hard for you to stay grounded, right? It's hard to be mm -hmm. grounded. And um, I do think there's an ancestral component to this, but that's not what the depression, the depression disconnect is coming in as for me. Um, it may, it, I'm going to leave it alone for a second because I've got a lot to talk about here. So okay. I don't think it doesn't involve ancestry. I just don't think that's the direct on it. Your strength is chakra eight for me, which means that you're already on your life contract, darling. You know what you're here to do, and that is going to get you through this. So one of the things that's going on for you is probably that your life purpose is driving you <laughs> to do something right now. Mm -hmm. Um the primary thing I hear actually for this depression feeling and disconnect is an entity. <laughs> so I need to okay. talk about what an entity is. Um, entities for me are actually just um, often, let's see what they want me to tell you about the entity. Entities fall into two categories for me. Entity means like an empathy plus a belief. Okay. And so. Um, empathy they, what? I'm sorry. It's kind of an empathy. Empathy like. Um, and being able to feel somebody else's uh -huh. feelings plus but but plus a belief okay. and when those two kind of hang out for a while and kind of get all mixed up they they can cause a particular almost um almost um basically entities have an energy to them yeah and like an energetic they, pattern yes That's and they have Perfect. You already itself. know what I'm talking about. Okay. And what's nice about entities, they have their own kind of agenda at a certain point and they influence on that level. Okay. So, and it isn't, I like to think about entities. They, I don't think that they're actually um, malicious, right? What I think they are is that they're, 
that I see it as, how does that make everybody tell them the story over and over? I see it as going to the Salvation Army, okay? So like, <laughs> if you don't know if you've ever gone to the Salvation Army, but if you go to the Salvation Army and you go and you're going down the aisle and you're alone in the aisle and everything's happy and then all of a sudden you like see this really cool thing, like a, you know, a spoon, right? And so you look at the spoon, you're like, whoa, that's a cool spoon. And then all of a sudden you look, you have like six people in the aisle with you looking at that spoon. Okay. <laughs> that is what an entity is to me. It's a focus or a magnification of energy on a, on one thing and your consciousness and the consciousness of others, anything that resonates with that will magnify it. Okay. So an entity is always either desire something or resist. That's all they do. Okay. So let's check yours and I'm going to guess it's a disconnect entity. So it feels like a resist to me. Right. That makes so a lot I, of sense. yeah, I don't want to feel that. And what I, what I feel here is it's, it feels numb would be the word I'd use probably. Mm. Um, like, um, almost like, honestly, it feels almost like anesthesia to me, mm -hmm. um, like a sense of anesthesia. So when that comes on, I need you to notice it, right? I'm feeling numb. Like I have anesthesia and I didn't have any just now. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Right. And then I do get this is an this is an allergic reaction and an infection. So those are the three I've got. And the allergic reaction, I think, is mostly emotional. An emotional allergy means that when that anesthesia thing comes on, it triggers you and you have an emotional overreaction to it. And what I feel from the emotional overreaction is heavy. It feels like um a tiny bit like eeyore <laughs> like this again <laughs> like oh i'm going down you know like bleh, that kind of yes thing. so yes. that i want you to pay attention that's your when you've been triggered you go into the eeyore okay so pay both of those that's an allergy that's an emotional allergy so your best bet with an emotional allergy is to notice and then go back where did i get triggered am i actually feeling disconnected Okay. And do I feel like I have anesthesia? <laughs> right. And then mm -hmm. we have to deal with the entity. Okay. Because the entity may be an invasion, a little bit of an invasion there to your field. It's not, it's not yours. It's not something, and it's not really helping you. Does that oh make sense? Gosh. Yes. Okay. So when we deal with entities, what we want to do is notice they're there. And then you want to actually, the best thing to do with entities that I know of is just to be neutral, <laughs> where you notice them, you know, and then find that sensation of numbness in you and find all the borders of it. So like put it into a three dimensional spot in you. Can you feel that in your body? I don't know. Not at the moment. Okay. So it may not be with you right now, but if you put it into three dimensions, kind of find its edges, then with okay. an entity, you want to say something like, um, hello. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know that you're not me? Like you're not me, right? This is not me. Okay. And if you like, you can tap your thymus. I like to tap my thymus really gently, which is right under your sternum, right? Right above your heart and below your throat. And you'd be like, hey, immune system, this is not me. Okay. <laughs> and just gently, lovingly say that. And let your energetic immune system come and take care of it. Um, if you want to do deeper work with this at some point, you can do something where you go in and... Um, get an image of what that is and work with it and be loving to it. If it's okay. something that drains your energy, you want to find out, you know, what is it, what does it need from you? And uh, is that something that you could just become and love it for a minute <laughs> mm -hmm. so that it transforms? Um, if it's an opportunity like that, if it's sometimes with people who are strongly empathic, it isn't even that it's just that you kind of picked it up it's up up in your field, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, all right. I think that's the majority of what I'm supposed to tell you about that. Does that help okay. you get in a window? That's something I think probably if you'd want to work with me, I we a reading would be helpful. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> right? okay. we could really do the work in transforming that for you, uh, helping you transform it. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, it was very nice to meet you. You too. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. And yes, if you would like a full 75 minute medical intuitive reading from Dr. Wallace, 
you can uh, go to her website and I'll post that link in the chat, but it's draubreywallace.com. And because you're on the call today, you can get um, $22 off of that first reading by entering the promo code ROOTS22. So I would definitely um, take her up on that offer, you guys. It's an amazing experience. It's really in-depth. She goes through all the windows and you get this really cool picture that she draws intuitively that explains the whole reading for you. And again, it's just a not to be missed experience if you want to dive a little deeper into all of this. So I'll post that in just a minute. Um, also, I just got a message, Laura, you need to leave at the top of that hour. So um, we'll have you come up next, but I want Doreen, Jeanette, and Sean to know that you also are going to get a reading today. So just hang tight and um, we'll get you on next. Okay, Laura, so why don't you unmute yourself? Cool, thank you so much. Um, hi, and hi, Aubrey, I've, I've listened to a few of your recordings here. My sister-in-law comes to these calls and is a big fan. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, she suggested I come and ask, yeah, ask my question. So yeah, and it is a medical question. So I, um, I, I suffer from cold sores. I've had them okay. since 2008. I know, you know, the boyfriend where I got them. Um, they were pretty, pretty bad initially. I think that's usually what happens when you get them. And then, um, I did take Valtrex. This was in 2008 again, like for a while, but then have really gone down the natural path. They, they really weren't much of a problem for a very long time. And, but in the last, I don't know, I guess the last few years, they've started to pop up more. And then I was able to mitigate them with some natural remedies like supplements, but since last spring, it was actually like shortly after my last birthday, my birthday's at the end of April, they have come back with just a vengeance. It's like, as soon as one goes away, there's one right behind it. And I, I now have gotten some Valtrex again. I just, something is, I, I know there's more to the story here. <laughs> I gotcha. don't know what to do. All right. Well, let's see if we can, we'll see if we can sort it out here a little bit. So, um, what it's interesting. Uh, the first thing I get, is I get a four, two, three for you, which isn't an infection. <laughs> so okay. I will say, just sometimes they don't give me the obvious because I'm yeah. Uh, are those the window it's panes? An infected. Those are. So oh, cool. uh, we so we'll go through your window panes. What's nice about those is that they're all on the inside, <laughs> so they're things we can nice. work with easily. <laughs> yes. Um, so actually, and what I'm getting here doesn't make a whole lot of doctor brain sense to me, but I've got, uh, I have that there's a musculoskeletal component, a chemical component, we have nutrition, uh, genetic, and a genetic component there. So we'll go through these in a little bit. I've got environmental factor, looks, so environmental toxicity. This is actually the big one. That's interesting. Environmental toxin, which is mm. what? Uh, middle. Um, show me. what I'm feeling is like, um, it feels, it may be EMFs. I'm not quite sure, but it feels like it's a little bit of a buzzing in your environment, like feeling in the environment, which either is EMFs or something in that realm. Um, uh -huh. and that I actually feel is pretty aggravating. They're giving me, that's probably about 70% uh -huh. uh, of the issue. Um, is there a heavy metal here? There is a little bit of heavy metal uh, toxin and plastic. And then I have a chemical toxin coming in as well. So we have a little bit of, there's a little bit of an adventure in toxins there. Um, and then I do have an allergy also, allergy, uh, environmental, is this, I think this is either mold or dust, dust? Um, no, closer to mold or mildew. How are you with mold? Um, like, how do I react to it? Or how's my environment? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, both. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I'm, yeah, I mean, I think I'm sensitive to it, like most people. Okay. Um, I've been, I've cleaned up my, like, my nutrition and my, like, what, I, like, products I use and all of that. My daughter's eight. And when I was pregnant, I, like, got really into that. But um, I live in a brand new house. Here we go. Okay. So I don't think it necessarily that you're getting, this is not toxic mold. That was not in the toxic mold category. This is just an allergy to mold 
I think, okay. or mildew. Uh, let me feel dust and uh, any chemical. This acts, there's a chemical and there's a chemical toxin. So I'm curious if there's something in your new house that actually has maybe off gassing or something. Let me check the house. Is it carpet? Oh. Um, there's a little, it's like what they're showing me is this, it's kind of been the compounding of a lot of things. There's a little bit of reaction from the carpet. <laughs> um, there's a little bit of reaction from, I don't understand what this is, but I feel this on a lot of houses. So if someone could ever tell me what it is, that would be great. It's like, it feels like a powder and it feels like it's inside the walls of the house, like, like a powder that's in the walls. It feels like you're having a little bit of a little bit of reaction to that. There's a, the paint's not so bad. Um, I do feel a little from the carpet and then I do think that it's just, you know, mold season. Um, so you're going in probably the outdoors have a little bit of reaction. Huh? I mean, um, I live, so I, yeah. yeah, so um, crazy. I live in big sky, yeah. Montana, like one of the most pure, beautiful places Clean in the world, as heck, but, on yeah. but there's an insane amount of construction. Okay. Going on around me. Yeah. I'm not sure if, yeah, I would think that you guys don't have a lot of EMFs there. Um, what I'm feeling is like a buzz. Oh, never mind. Hold on. Ah, that is not what I expected. Um, so, <laughs> wow, that's cool. Um, sorry, they're showing me. They're showing me your connection to the earth uh, is very strong, and. So you're experiencing the buzzing that the planet is experiencing there a little bit. Uh, oh. That would be the easiest words I have for that. It's more like there's a toxin, toxic vibration in the land, and you are experiencing it as adding to your fun here. Okay. So oh. I think that being a sensitive, beautiful sensitive there, uh, you got that going on for you a little bit. It's um, interesting. What, I get passionate yeah. about that. Uh, yeah, I, I do. And I, Whenever my friends say things like they're raping the land, I get very, yes. I'm like, yes, they are. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> and one of the things that cold sores mean for me is it cold sores are about suppressing emotion sometimes. <laughs> okay. And mm -hmm. usually in the version of suppressing emotion, there is not in a bad way. It's actually in a way to like stay shore up and be the stability for other people. So we kind of kind of keep stuff suppressed a little bit so that we can get through and hold everybody up. So you mm -hmm. might consider whether or not that's happening with you around the earth. And if there is some action that you need to be taking for yourself, however, and honestly, the action might be prayer, darling. Yeah. So something where you just connect to the planet and send in good energy, send back to the, to the mother there, give her, give her what she needs. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let me see percentages on the rest of this. I do, yeah, I got about 30% on genetic. Chemical, not much, 10% musculoskeletal. So musculoskeletal is pretty big here for some reason. And I'm feeling tension in your neck and your back, upper back, neck, uh, left side of your thorax, some things in your hips. So you may want to just either do, do anything like massage or yoga, uh, chiropractic. Mm, yeah, chiropractic for sure. Um, okay. I could do more yoga. <laughs> yeah. All of us. Um, yes. Um, yeah. So do, okay. it seems like something, get support, maybe just a massage, right? Yeah. Get them to squeeze out the, squeeze out your muscles there or something that would help or yoga to help with the muscle, muscle tension. Mm -hmm. That is adding to the fun a lot. And that's showing me if you can get that out, I think that's helping you get a clean circuit. It seems kind of like a tyranny of many little tiny things all at once here. Hmm. So, and, and your cold sores are just like the, I'm over the edge. <laughs> like, you know, they're like, yeah. I've hit, I've gone over. So I need to lower my stress and, and I need to lower that through, uh, apparently praying for the planet and connecting into nature. Uh, I can do and that. Then, yeah. The genetic parts, let's see what they got there. I actually, I heard vitamin D3. Um, so you might want to look at whether or not you're someone who doesn't absorb D3 very well, and you might need to load it. Anything else? A's, B's, A's, lipids, MAO, Um, I do feel MTHFR might be in the game for you, which uh, if you want to look that up sometime uh, and go down that rabbit hole... <laughs> That might be useful to you. Uh, that's a that's a genetic snip around B vitamin management. 
Okay. M T H A what a huh? <laughs> well, huh? So, I know. Um, it, it it's easiest to remember as a motherfucker. <laughs> so okay. That's M T H F R. Yeah, there you go. It isn't that. It's methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, but it's easier <laughs> to remember it. as the other one. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, so funny. Okay. There you go. So that's quite quite one. So you might want to look at vitamin D3 and that, and then really start working with the earth right now. I, I'm wondering if this is calling you to some work on this level. I, yeah, yeah, I think it might be. It's all okay. kind of adding up and making sense. So it's cool. All right. I love it. Well, I hope so that much. helps. Nice yeah, to meet yeah. you. Yes, all right. you too, so much. Say thank right. you to your sister. Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. That was really in depth. That was cool. Uh, all right, Doreen, you are next, then Jeanette and Sean. Hi, Doreen. Do you want to just hit your mic on the bottom right of the okay. of your there? You there go. it is. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How can I help? Um, I've recently been diagnosed with lipedema with secondary lymphedema. Um, I've been having symptoms since 2010, but when I went to doctors, I was either misdiagnosed or ignored. And in the end, I basically figured it out and asked for a referral to a specialist from, from my doctor. Um, so I don't know what your knowledge or experience is with it, but, um, um, tell me a little bit about more about lipidemia, because I, I do know about secondary lymphedema. I don't okay. know about lipidemia, um, but Lip I know those two words. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I, I, I think there's a lipidemia, but this is all, this is lip edema, L-I-P-E-D-E-M-A. Oh. It's a lymphatic disorder. Ah. They also say it's a fat disorder. Okay. It's 99.99999% women get it. Most of the time it comes on during a hormonal onset, either puberty, pregnancy, or perimenopause. Okay. It manifests in um, painful fat usually and swelling, and usually in the bottom half of the body. Wow. Um, it's considered to be hereditary. They don't have a cure. It's not been studied very much, as you might imagine. I imagine. Nobody knows about I it. And, um, yeah, I was like, if I haven't heard about it, that's odd but I'm yeah happy to hear thank you um and uh there that that's enough to play with i imagine okay all right can we play with that yes all right going in on that all right thank you also for helping educate me <laughs> oh thank you for being open to hear oh, about it the only thing you should learn as a doctor is that, that you always have more to learn, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, Doreen, get my channels going. Okay, there you are. Oh, weird. All right, so what I feel right off the bat with you is it feels literally like from third chakra down that you're in the water. Like you feel like yeah. the bottom half of you is floating in an ocean. Um, so let me see if I can get better understanding here. Oh. Well, you thought we were going weird, but here we go. Um, <laughs> uh, you, they're showing me it. It does almost, it feels almost as if you're stuck between have the quite the right words but i'm going to use the word dimensions because <laughs> i'm not sure okay. the right word to use but you have like the bottom half of you is in one place and the top half of you is in another place okay, okay. um the bottom half feels like actually um very expansive kind of like water but also groundless and also um almost if when I dive in all the way on that bottom level, it feels like being in outer space. It feels, and actually I would say, feels kind of better <laughs> than being above in the okay. one above to me. Um, feels um, unlimited, like the dark, like the dark feminine stillness 
like the womb, mm -hmm. that energy. Um, so let's see what they want us to do with this. Um, they said, take or leave this. They're saying to me that you, you called this in. Um, <laughs> and, but you got scared in the middle. <laughs> like literally. Um, and so it, the transformation isn't complete. So the okay. idea is you want to allow that feminine to not to be stopped at the third chakra, but to allow for the complete transformation. Um, and it, and let's see, how can you, do you already know the best way to do that? Or do you need me to ask more? Please ask. I okay. don't really have any help. Idea. Just help <laughs> us. Yeah. Uh, this is a weirdy, uh, in a good way. Weird to me means God, by the way, everyone, if I say that a lot. <laughs> so weird like God. Okay. Um, I think, oh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, you are caught at the third chakra and the third chakra is usually our sense of, you know, our confidence in who we are and kind of our mental realm, how we, how we define ourselves, the archetypes we've lived, the roles that we play. Okay. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's where it's blocked up a little. And okay. my sense is that your best road through this and why you may have stopped resist, started resisting it is you are pissed. <laughs> so sorry but you are it feels so mad in there like really mad and i don't think you uh you haven't had an outlet for that that's been easy so thankfully medicine jumped right in to piss you off congratulations so uh at least that medicine can play that outlet for you right now do you know what i mean i i guess i've been really angry since i've been diagnosed i bet um but i didn't if I was angry before, I wasn't. Okay. So can we, you and I, let's gently go into this. Can we? Because yeah. I feel like you're, you are, you are also a very strong empath. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So the anger doesn't have to all be yours. You understand? Uh-huh. Okay. This is ancestral for you. Finally, we got one. Yay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have an <laughs> ancestral pattern here. And okay. that anger is the anger of, I feel the anger of war in there, um, like a sense of war. Um, and, and there is, that's actually a very masculine feeling to me. It mm -hmm. feels like a masculine war. Uh, and I feel fiery feeling, um, like destruction, wars, destruction. Um, now it's on there. I feel marching for some reason I'm seeing like the civil war and the U S uh, people are, and it's like, people are walking and walking and walking. And I don't know if they're, it's like the war's over, but they just keep walking um, okay. and they are exhausted, but they can't stop. Uh, there is just, you know, they're done. They're, they're, they're tapped out emotionally. Um, they've been defeated, I guess would be the right way to say that they feel defeated. And I'm not sure they didn't win. <laughs> but they still feel defeated. Does that make sense? The whole yeah. thing just feels like a defeat of mm -hmm. life. And so there's this deep burning feeling there. And I feel it coming through your third chakra. And I think as this dark feminine started to rise up, the unknown, the unknown in you, that's a powerful, beautiful thing that will bring stillness and balance to that masculine aspect. Um, and it's with ancestral patterns, you have a lot of support here. Uh, well, I don't know if it's, that's quite the way to say this is a good, this is a good example, right? Which is, um, you want you, you're being given an opportunity to uh, help heal the ancestral pattern around those issues. Okay. So uh, part of that will be to feel them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in your life, you have to go to war, you have to go to battle somewhere. And it seems like maybe medicine has played that role for you having to go to battle for yourself, right? Having to stand up and battle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have decided that I want to be a force for educating uh, not just the public, but also doctors somehow, if somehow, however oh, I can get in. Because, beautiful. <laughs> because they think 11% of women in this country have it. And um, yeah, like I said, I went undiagnosed for 12 years. Okay. So that's, so that is beautiful. Bring, bring your, bring the battle. That's okay. enough. 
I will tell you that I'm not, you know, like 80% of that is not your battle. Okay. 80% of that is the ancestral battle. So you think about how much force they have, though, to help you on your battle. They will keep you resilient and they'll keep you fighting. Okay. I need to explain to you, and, and I please take or leave this if you need it, but if you anchor yourself to an illness as a mo in order to move through with this educating, then uh, you anchor yourself to an illness. Okay. Just be aware. <laughs> that becomes your story. That becomes your path. It stays your path rather. And so just having that as an awareness as you're going through to change the world, you don't, beautiful person, you do not need to be anchored in this illness to educate doctors. Please educate doctors. They don't have to know whether or not you have it, right? Going forward, tell people, let's get a blog. Let's do all the things, right? Let's spread the word, spread the information. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, because I don't know if that 11%, I'm gonna guess 11% of them aren't stuck halfway between dimensions. <laughs> I don't know the cause for them, but maybe it is as the as the feminine power rises, as the feminine energy rises in menopause. It's like enlightenment, man. It's like pure, deep enlightenment energy rises up and then doesn't discharge. Right. It has mm -hmm. been discharging every month and then it stops <laughs> and uh -huh. just builds and builds. So I would love I don't know what causes that. I would love to start exploring that. But for you, it sounds like this might be a direction. Let yourself fight the battle and win. Go for it. Uh, if you get to this point where you sit down and be like, I'm tired of having this illness. No, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. I've, I've decided that I'm allowing the feminine to, to rise all the way through me. I'm stepping into full power. I'm releasing it. I'm feeling and letting go of that anger for my ancestors, with my ancestors. Yes. Right? Okay. I'm done with the war. The feminine really is done with warring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think you've become this beautiful embodiment of that, maybe to change the world. Thank you. <laughs> but but you're saying if I do want to be, if I do want to educate people, it is going to be a battle and I will have to hang on to this? Oh, no, no. Educate people. Oh, educate people. Okay. What I'm saying is just don't get don't get caught up in needing to identify with the illness. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Please educate people. Okay. And if, of course, I'm biased, but also why not educate them that you're stuck between dimensions and then how you healed it, right? Because <laughs> wouldn't that be nice to actually get us past medicines, I limited ideas of everything? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Then you can become a really cool story and everybody will want to listen to you, all of the ones that are stuck between dimensions in particular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Go, Doreen. <laughs> Go forth oh, and educate. Yeah. I love that. What a powerful reading. Thank you. Um, and for bringing that to our awareness. I had no idea either that, that that was a thing. So I'm learning along with you guys. Great. Okay. So Jeanette, you are up. Jeanette. You can take yourself off mute. You are next. That button's on the bottom right of your screen. Yeah. Okay, well maybe you're otherwise occupied. We can circle back to you. Awesome. Um, Sean, go ahead and you can take yourself off mute. Hi, Sean. Hey, Sean. Are you able to talk? Not either. All right. So we will again circle back and what we and who we have next is, and I know I'm not going to be able to say your name quite right, but is it Carolyn, you just muted. Oh, okay. Is it Jabril? But I, Jabril? Jabril? Yeah, maybe. If I'm saying that correctly. There. Yes. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. How are you today? 
Do you we, know what you do you know what you've gotten yourself into here? <laughs> would you like a mini medical intuitive reading? Oh, okay, he's back on mic. All right. Okay, let me just uh, reach out to Jeanette and um, see if she's available. And in the meantime, though, Dr. Aubrey, if you'd like to share a little bit more about the ancestral healing work that you do. Absolutely. Um, okay, and thank you, Carolyn, thank you for running the chat and the moderating today. You are quite amazing. Um, the ancestral healing, so the ancestral healing work I do is not pure, um, not pure to the uh, Klinghart model. <laughs> so I don't do pure family constellation. Uh, uh, I am married to a medium named Melanie Mitchell. And when we do ancestral healings, we have a combined ancestral uh, healing and we have, a, I have an individual one. Um, Melanie, I have some mediumship ability. Melanie is an exceptional uh, medium and able to uh, really help in this realm. So with our combined ancestral readings, we tend, we uh, will bring your family trees in and it helps, we give you a genealogy, genogram it's called. And so you kind of write out your family history a little bit for us, just the names. And then we come together and uh, we look through your family tree for patterns. And usually what happens in the combined reading is I will find um, streams of patterns that come through the lines of the tree and help you to understand uh, and remember what those patterns are and how they're impacting your health. And Melanie often then will be able to just call up and talk directly to the ancestor that's involved with that pattern. So um, our combined ancestral readings are unique, <laughs> I think, version of ancestry and mediumship uh, that are pretty cool and very, uh, very healing. When I'm working by myself with a person, too, I... Uh, I do some mediumship, but most often we work through understanding and healing backwards in time some of those patterns going through the lineage. So usually we go in on a medical condition or in on a medical symptom, and that actually opens up uh, the patterns and the causes for those medical imbalances going back through the line. And then always it ends up for me, uh, we do the, the ancestral healing is nearly always uh, done by the person themselves um, in the superpowers they have <laughs> uh, already come in with uh, are the things that the ancestors need in order to heal whatever thing that has been passed down through that uh, gr family group. And I know um, I will, since uh, my, my original plan had been to offer the $22 off the ancestral readings, <laughs> Uh, but I will, I'll go ahead and, and expand it to the medical intuitive if that's helpful for people. But uh, my, we did it, I did the 22 coupon this time, Roots 22, just for ancestral readings and combined ancestral readings. If you guys are interested in doing ancestral healing, that's good for two weeks. And then I'll go ahead and just open it for the medical intuitive bookings for the next week too. Oh, okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I wasn't clear. <laughs> no, I didn't tell you very much, very well. Okay. So, um, can you guys hear me now? Oh, yeah, we got Sean, Sean. is back. Uh, Yay. Uh, Hi. The software engineer prevails. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I, I'm good. It's nice to be back. Thank you for nice having me. Nice to have today. you back. All right. How'd you do after the last one? Did it get derailed or okay? Or how'd we do? No, I think I think it was very enlightening. Um, you know, you had said two things that, that really resonated with me. One was that I had been experiencing a lot of this fear, fear yeah. of dying, fear of health issues, fear of heart. And the other issue is that I stopped believing that I could truly heal myself. Mm. Um, and Carolyn was nice enough to send me a book that we are the placebo, or you are the placebo. Ooh, nice. So I've been reading that and it's really resonated with me and it's really brought me back to my own core beliefs of my own intuition. And Yay. <laughs> my, yeah, it's been great. Uh, my wife already read the book. She, she's over the moon on it as well. Um, awesome. But my, my fear has subsided quite a bit. All right. And, you know, you had mentioned that you had seen somebody running around inside of me, scared and, and, and fearful. And I wanted to see that, you know, see what you thought about that today. 
okay. and also that I feel that my health has has turned around um, for the better Yay. since I last spoke to you. And so I'm just curious what you're getting today around that. And maybe I've kicked the guy out. Maybe I've helped him process. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Yes. All right. Fear. Let's play. Uh, that's not quite the right question. Let's try the right question oh. first. <laughs> See if I can get it. Um, okay. So there's, so what I'm feeling when I tap in is I do feel a little bit of pressure between your heart and your throat right now. Um, see if they want to give me anything there. No, that's they're, interesting. They're showing me. Taking... Oh, go Sorry, ahead. Go ahead. I was no, just, I was please. taking a drug that they put me on the SEPA that the side effect is throat pain. And while taking that drug, I was manifesting a sore in my throat and a very high heart rate. And when I stopped taking that, all of that goes Better. away and I've been yeah. off of it four days. And today's the first day that that hasn't really hurt. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. And just in time, because um, I guess, please take or leave what I say always. What I feel is you, I still feel the guy in there, but now he feels like the size of about a little bit smaller than a marble. And I feel him in your throat on the right side, um, slightly above, <clears throat> kind of above your clavicle. On the right, maybe yeah. like two or three oh, inches above, not quite. Maybe, maybe um, near the lymph. Yes, right around there. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I'm wondering is if we can just ask for help <laughs> on getting him to transition, if that's okay. It's nice what happens with the dead sometimes when they do that. Uh, if they're if they're too unbalanced, they can't even, we can't anchor in to communicate with them. But if it's in, if he's isolated like that, I think you might be able to, to t tap into him. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've been having conversations with him daily. Yay! Oh, you already have. Awesome. So would you like to help him move along? Yes, please. Awesome. So did you uh, did you get any anything in the conversation that would help me anchor in? Do you have a name or a feeling of him? I don't. Just that he's he's spooked and and not so happy that I've been dumping maybe meds in on top of him. Okay, so let's let's see if we can. Okay, they're showing me if would you if you would like. I would like you to invite. So I see it almost like a projector, right? He's gonna project out in front of you an image of himself so that you can talk to him. Could you see him do that? Almost like project out of that marble. And just anything you see, just let me know. I'm just sort of staring at the wall here, waiting, but I'm, and it's it's not coming. Okay, let me see if I can hear again. Help. But he has an open invitation to leave. All right, and I, what I feel like you're, I feel like he's staring at the wall. Is he's staring at the wall? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you're. That's My hands the, are getting sweaty for no yeah. reason at the moment. So the feeling but... the feeling I get from him is he's 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 a little scared still. He's not as scared as he was. He's not like groundless and freaking out. But he's also like not really sure he wants to step anywhere. Like he's kind of fro like kind of helpless. What's it called when you freeze? He's in freeze a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's see. So if it's okay with your permission, I'm just gonna ask for someone to help him come move along. Yes. <laughs> um all right, so we have Sean and I will call in my team here. Okay, then I feel the Archangel come in and I have him with you just a second now. Oh have them with you. I don't know if they're gender exactly. All right. And it feels like he's, um, I feel his energy move out of your throat, kind of out into the front of your field, energy field in front of your heart. It's, and then I feel him resonating a lot with your heart itself. So it's almost like there's something in there that's, um, it's almost like tugging at your heart and I don't want to tug at your heart. So just a second. <laughs> Help. 
So they're showing me there's a part of him that feels like he he thinks that he's there to help you stay alive. Oh, I've sensed that. Okay. Um, I said that same thing to my wife a while back is that, you know, fear of mine was that if he jumps out, I die or something. Like he's there protecting me. Okay. Um, like I think he agrees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if it's okay, and usually, so um, the archangel is showing me that it's not his time. Uh, it's not his time to go, which is an interesting thing. <laughs> If this hasn't happened to me before, I'll just tell you I'm walking through with you. Um, so it feels like uh, Azrael's not ready to take him. So I think he's he's going to go. <laughs> so Azrael's going to move on. And and let's see if we can work this in a different way. So let's so it seems like first what I'm hearing from your guides is just gratitude. Because <laughs> it feels like this being is with you to help you with you to help you uh, stay. Yeah, I've lost two people to heart related issues, my dad and then a father like figure within okay. two years ago was the father like figure. And I sometimes wonder if they're there. That it there in that there. second one. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he was the closest thing to a father figure parental figure that I've had probably ever. Oh. That's it was, amazing. It was a great I, loss to me. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's hard. What I see is I see this man holding your heart in his hands. Like he's literally yeah. holding it with both hands. <laughs> him, him and I bonded over our, our heart sort of blockages yeah. and heart attacks stuff and, 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 and things like that. Wow. That's what we okay. talked about. Yes. He's also, he's excited a little bit. It feels like, cause you are, he's got a chance to, to, He's got another chance through you <laughs> um, at, to have an impact, right? Mm, yeah. So this is still, it's like he's still in his work. <laughs> he was also um, very, a re very religious sort of mentor to me as well, who sort of brought me back to some okay. of my beliefs. Yes. And he's not done yet. That's all he's telling me. I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, I do get <laughs> kind like of it. a, yeah, he's, there's kind of a Dumbo reference here, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah. you still need your feather for right now. Although, you know, it is you that you need to believe, but sometimes we just need help. And he's yeah. there. Um, he He's laughing. I think uh, he enjoy. he has a very, he's showing me his laugh for some reason, which is, it's kind of a beautifully hearty laugh. It's not, um, it just feels like joy, but kind of a deep joy. I don't know the yeah. right words for it. Like a big a Norwegian laugh. fisherman guy. There you go. Thank you. It's got a, <laughs> it's almost a sing song quality to it, but it's a strange combo of things I'm trying to describe. Um, but yes, please remember his laugh because I think he's, uh, he's there. He, he's there with you. Hmm. Uh, and he's saying we can do it together. Well, that, that sounds very much like him. Yeah. So here I go thinking that some sort of crazy thing is wrong. And no way, Ted, you've got all sorts of help there. Um, yeah, almost sounded like a Norwegian. Oh, help there. Yeah, <laughs> help there. Uh, but yes, anything that would help with this going forward. Just, just gratitude for him. Remembering he's there. Um, it may be easier for you to remember gratitude with him there. Yeah, I've, gratitude's been a been a guiding principle of mine uh, in regards to him and and other things in in my life since him and around him. Beautiful. Nothing nothing better for health, I would imagine, except for maybe laughter. <laughs> so <laughs> got those two. I do really Working feel on. your wife here also, um, and she feels like shining light on you. So Absolutely. It, yeah. Yeah. And so if you, it feels like she will also joyfully laugh about him. So maybe you guys can share that. You can share that experience. Yeah, I think she would. Yeah. Be it's because also... she and I met him together. Uh, it was, it was an encounter of both of ours who had met him and he very much loved her. Yes. She reminded him of exchange students that that he had his whole life like a daughter yeah <laughs> yeah very much like a daughter yeah 
That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And so you are in your case, your ancestor is not bloodline, but is absolutely there. And he's holding your heart. <laughs> well, that makes sense because so. he was the closest thing I have ever had to, to, to true family that I've been connected to. Beautiful. Thank I'm you for not, that example. My roots, my visualization of my roots were very flat, almost ground level. Um, yes. Surface, during, the, right? during the meditation, yeah. Yeah. And so... Yeah. You, um, we might do well working with that, Sean, if we go in on something, uh, yeah, because sometimes the, there is an anchor point in the physiology for your roots to be, even if your parents are toxic or something, we, we want to work on anchoring you into the ground on some level. Sure. So that might be some, a place to work first that if you want to play, um, it feels like we see yeah. There you go. Then we can get this pattern because I do feel like the actual heart attack pattern is the ancestral problem. Like the, yes. the heart attack pattern is from the ancestor. So, but, and yes. the stability is from your chosen family. Yes. Yeah. 100%. So, and yours, but your strengths and abilities are to help heal the pattern of your ancestors. Yeah. yeah. Working on it every day. And yes, so let me know if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I will certainly be reaching out to you. Yes. All right. Take care. Thank of you. you so much. That was that was great. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, that one made me tear up. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. We're all yeah. crying. Yeah. It's good. We can just all cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That is so beautiful. Thank you, Sean, for bringing that here to the to. You know, bless us all. Remember that the ancestors are here to help as much as we are here to be the um, transitional character in our family's um, lineage. So, whew. so with that, Jeanette is back, and hopefully, oh yay! Yeah, she got it. Yay! Fantastic. Hello. Oh, I can't. Okay, you're gonna have to turn up your volume a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, it must be my AirPods are not working. How yeah. Is this volume? Uh, still pretty hard to hear. Oh. Are you able to maybe um, go off your earbuds? Okay, how's this? <laughs> Very quiet. It's still quiet. Oh, there we go. It's coming. Okay, I'll just yell so the whole neighborhood gets to hear everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we got you. Okay, awesome. Um, I was saying thank you so much. I've been really, really enjoying this whole hour. And thank you oh. for going over time for me. Thank you for coming. Actually, we, we have another 20 minutes usually. Oh, so perfect. you're right in, right in the right online. Great. How can I help? So, um, I, my health has always been really inconsistent. Okay. Um, I'll be going along fine. I seem really fine. And then I'll just get sick like often or okay. I'll get a migraine. Um, and you know, I try to have really healthy habits and clean diet and all that, but there's still just something going on. So I wondered if you had any insight. All right. So I'm going to, can I, I heard health crash. <laughs> That's what I heard. So let me, I like those that you have these little health crashes every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we can get here. Uh, all right. I got an eight, a four and a two. Let's see what that is. Oh, we're going to play. Get me introduced to the other steps. So actually I got past life. I got, uh, so structural genetic. Nutrition, chemical, chemical. Uh, I'd get some nutritional stuff and chemical stuff there, and then environmental toxin. I do think there's some there's some level that environmental toxicity plays in the game here, but it feels like a, it's kind of like a smaller layer that just throws the thing over. Okay, so it seems like, let me see if I can get percentages here. Past life is about 40%. Nutrition is, ooh, nutrition's pretty high, about 60%. Chemical, chemical's about 20%. 
So let's see which one this is. Is this water? Yeah, it's like hydration is a big deal for you. And then nutrition. Let's see if we can get our nutritional factors. Um, they're showing me you're missing some kind of very important pieces. So let me see if I can get my category. Proteins, fat, fats, vitamins, minerals, minerals. Anything else? Okay, so fats we need. We need. D-A-K. Wow, all of them. <laughs> D-A-K. Uh, e. Oh, you're okay on E. Congratulations. Well, let's see. We need phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, omega-3, omega-6. So you're doing okay. It sounds like you need your fat-soluble vitamins or for some reason not absorbing very well or not doing um, an easy time being in there on the regular. So that's vitamin D, vitamin A, and vitamin K. So we might want to look for you on keeping those in balance. Minerals? No trace minerals? Um, they're yelling molybdenum in my head. Uh, that's Sorry. So okay. How has that been one that you've tried much? Molybdenum is a cofactor on some liver detox pathways that have a genetic component. Yeah, I um, recently um, found out that my glucuronidation yes. was compromised. So I've actually been working on that quite actively. And that's why I don't um, absorb the fat soluble nutrients well. Oh, well, we're way off then. Ha ha. Bad joke. Uh, so good. We're right on track. Um, yeah. I do think also selenium might be helpful. Uh, so molybdenum, selenium, let me see if any more. Zinc, iron, cop copper uh, might be useful. Don't go too much on copper. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Copper has to be kept in balance. Anything else there? Any other trace minerals? I don't, boron, nope. Um, vanadium, potassium, anything else? So you might just play the world of trace minerals, but really it feels to me like yours are going to have to be real specific. So I'm so glad you're diving into your genetic pathways so that you can get them exactly. So go in and try to load those up, would you? So that you get them back to normal. And I think those that's a big percent of what I have going on is the 60% of that is those specific vitamins and minerals. Then I have about 20% is, is keeping your hydration right. Let me see if they can give me that. And, they, and it feels like it may be a little bit complicated for you, and I'm not sure why. But let's see. Electrolytes. They're showing me you you kind of, you run kind of a, um, your system is a little bit airy. <laughs> I don't know how, else, like you feel um, a little bit, like you have a lot more uh, air than other people. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um but maybe Vata in Ayurveda, right? You run a little bit more Vata. So the hydration is going to, I feel like you're a cycle person. You go through cycles. And I think that's important for you. And it's right. You want to go through cycles. That's happy. <laughs> okay. So, and part of what's happening with your health cycles, it's not a crash. It's a cycle. Okay. Is that you're, it seems like you go through and you kind of, you'll have like air and fire for a while. So you like produce, 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 and then you need a rest and water phase <laughs> and then an air and fire phase, then a rest and water phase. So there's kind of do your things in kind of cycles. And the sense is to go ahead and plan for the cycles. So you might want to look back and see how long has it been between those, you know, how long do I go? Is this a two-year cycle for me? Is this a two-month cycle for me? And look to see if you have any stability. And then the past life at 40%, let me see if they can give me anything. Before you move on, can you ask for yeah. more clarification on the water? Because I've always drunk Absolutely. more water than anyone I know. <laughs> okay. So I think it's related to the, the detox pathway problem. I think I was compensating. I got gotcha. you. Um, but I do, I do get um, muscle cramps, even though I take a lot of minerals. Okay. So let's see. Hydration. What do we do with her water? Uh, so the big thing I'm supposed to tell you is it's a cycle. I just, I know I just said that and that's annoying. But um, so that means to me, that means you're not going to have the same way of hydrating as other people. You can't do one thing all the time. Okay. So when you're in, when you're in the air and flow cycle, I think that's the cycle where you're not holding water very well. Like when you're producing it, when you're like push through cycle, you're not holding water very well. And they're showing me that would be a good time for you to be putting fruit in your water for some reason. Like I see fruit in your water. Uh, like, uh, so the water needs to be alive 
is the feeling. So you put, you know, always, always filter your water, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But also add some living fruit to it. And I'm seeing things like berries and kiwis and like happy things, put happy things in your water um, during that phase. And that the feeling I get is actually it'll make you enjoy the water more and so that you will want to drink the water instead of like pounding the water in. Because I think the problem with the water there is not that you're not drinking it, it's that it's the mode with which you're drinking it. It's like you're in the do, 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 and the water's like do, 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 do. And water isn't holds energy, darling. So you want the water to feel more like literally they're showing me like a star kiss commercial like burst of flavor right burst of burst of life that's what i want from your water it needs to be like la i love you i love the water okay and bring that in and then when you go then you go into this other phase right and when you're in your down phase or when you feel a little depleted that's when i think you can actually enjoy just kind of pounding water in that phase so you could do electrolytes in that phase you could do things that will bring more water flow in i actually think salt's not so bad for you darling so you might see what kind of salt yeah you might need more sodium chloride than other people um and so you might see yeah so go ahead and have some salt in that down phase and just watch try to listen to your body on which phase you're in right am i in the up and it's almost like summer and winter right so if, am I in summer phase? Am I in winter phase? Do you have a spring phase? Let me see. Uh, I don't know about spring and fall. Stick with summer and winter for right now. So you might want to just listen in on which which way your body needs water. Okay. Okay. And then if you want to talk to a past life person, uh, that might be helpful with part of the the cycles. Feel like it, the part of the past life thing is around the cycles. It's like it's trying you're caught in a cycle. Um, anything here? You want to show me anything at all? Uh, what the past life, I feel a sensation of kind of, uh, restriction in your throat center. Uh, it feels like almost like choking a little bit or <coughs> like that. Um, and so I think that's why the illness may hit your throat. If that helps. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. How'd we do? Yeah, that was super interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for playing. That's interesting that you, you zeroed right in on the glucuronidation. <laughs> well, I like to hear that. Yes, I don't get to say glucuronidation every day. It's happy. <laughs> well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for playing. I love that. Jeanette, Dr. Wallace is such a you guys would definitely connect. I would recommend doing a full reading with her because you both are so knowledgeable about all of these things. Geeking out. Yes. Totally geek out with each other. Total time. geek outs on all sorts of genetic weirdness. Makes me happy. I like it. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's a superhuman. That's what you mean. You're an epigenetic superhuman. That's the right phrase. <laughs> fantastic okay so um we're almost yeah we're we're almost about uh, seven minutes yeah. seven minutes so jabril if you want to get a reading you can take yourself off mic okay but if not um i think it's just time to wrap this up actually if Jean would like a reading. Um, there may be some reason that it, no one else is lining up. I know that you are my ancestor, but maybe there's something that needs to come through. There we go. <laughs> there she is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, this might I, be the universe saying you get to talk. I get to talk, right? I have been very moved by this one. I've cried about five times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, it's been great. Uh, particularly when my forest came in the meditation um felt very connected and i also with i can't remember who it was that was i i really felt like my ancestors are wanting me to fully step into this uh feminine power mm -hmm. um but i, I would bet. I would take, I would take anything uh, that you'd like to just 
give me today, Bobs. Okay. So if for the other people, this is my beautiful mother, Jean. <laughs> and I will open up and see what they want to give today. So the first thing that strikes me is OBS, which is grandma stepping in. Um, <laughs> and uh, she's just, I feel like she's just doing a little cameo. Like, you're so cool, cameo. <laughs> thank you, grandma. <laughs> I love you too. Um, and I thank you for thinking I'm cool. Uh, all right. And then what do we have else? Okay. Now I feel a rich, I'm feeling a lot of ancestors today. Um, and they feel uh, they're showing me the lines that the heritage and the lines of um, the healing, the healing lines. Uh, see if I can use better words for that. I know what you mean. Okay. Um, the way that I'm experiencing it today is as uh, a one uh, energetic chain almost of unbreakable steadiness and it feels like it's like they're saying 16 generations i don't even know if there are 16 generations but that's what i heard um and it's they're showing me it starts as just a little tiny sprinkle of a river you know a sprinkle that has gone into this ocean of energy um they're showing me it as gold colored. And they're showing me it comes, it seems to come sometimes and just express through the heart, just like poof, just shoot through the heart energy. Mm -hmm. um, they're showing me Kathleen. And they're showing me the two of you uh, with an infinity through your hearts with each other. So there's this empty, the power of eight, the power of the infinity through the two of your hearts. And then it shows me that like that amplification of the two of you. It, <laughs> it's like it, it exponentially increases the effect of that stability. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're showing me three is even better. Uh, or four. Um, what else there? <sighs> colors, just colors, lots and lots of colors. I see lots of hot pink fuchsia colors. I see purple and blue and turquoise. It's like they're waving in in colors. So, so look for the colors. Yeah, the rainbows are out today. There we go. And, and I'm just hearing rest uh like the the significance in them getting a take heed for both of us is rest that there's the the energy itself requires a still vessel <laughs> uh -huh. so sometimes the rest uh they're saying the rest's hard to do in this world um it, it's worth it mm. And it yeah. will be demanded <laughs> also. So that's probably yeah. more for me. Yeah. So I, if, I yeah. do think so. I think that's for all of us, for yes. both of us for sure. Yeah. And then I see a bluebird. So oh. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That, was, yeah. that probably didn't make any sense to anybody else, but it made sense to me, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what counts. Thank, Thank you, too. All right. Love Bye. you. Love Bye. you, too. Aw, that was beautiful, too. Yes, and I love the imagery, actually, even though, you know, that's personal to you. Um, that's how the body understands and communicates is through the imagery, right? So, oh, so beautiful. What a, an amazing call today, Aubrey. Really, you, really Carla. powerful. 
and everybody got so much from their readings and so I would love to invite you all back for the next window of health reading which is going to be other factors. other factors oh no we're on seven we still have oh, seven so seven, seven is yes next one will actually be the systems of stress dun, dun, dun. oh da, da, so this da, da, da. is complex systems that have impact our health so okay great yeah. can't wait for that one that will be october 19th uh yes. same time one o'clock and uh sign up for the newsletter you'll get that notification and so you can go to dreawallace.com and just check out her site in general and all of the wonderful services that she offers, including doing a more in-depth medical intuitive reading and also the ancestral readings. Uh, there is a promo code in the chat for the next uh, two weeks for the ancestral healing. It's Roots22, and you said you, off you would offer for the... Yes, I'll expand it. Yeah. yeah, expand it for the other reading too. So hope you all enjoyed that, learned a lot, and do come back for more. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, Carolyn, for being you. <laughs> Thank you. And I can't wait for my intuitive reading next week. It's going. I know. To We're right. going to go into the roots, baby. Into the <laughs> Take ancestral it down. Stuff. <laughs> All right. Ready to play. Okay. Thanks, right. everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.